Hi, I'm Don Kramer from the Monterey Peninsula Rotary Club, and I'm here today to talk about the WAPI, the Water Pasteurization Indicator. You may not know that 6,000 children under 5 die every day from contaminated water. Some 80% of the illnesses in an underdeveloped countries is caused by contaminated water. And over 1 billion people on the earth don't have regular access to clean water like you and I do. So how does the WAPI work? And how does it help that situation? The WAPI, as I mentioned, is a water pasteurization indicator. It will indicate when water has passed pasteurization temperature long enough to render itself clean enough to drink. Let's talk about what the WAPI is. This is a WAPI. There's a special soy wax in this tube that right now is melted and it's at, clear, it's at white. When this wax melts to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, it will turn clear and drop to the bottom of the tube. That means it's been over 149 degrees pasteurization temperature for some time. That water has indicated it's clean to drink. Now, if I let this cool off, the wax will turn white again at the other end and I can actually turn this over and use it again almost forever so it's a reusable very simple to use device so this is the WAPI kit that you would receive like I said before all the components and instructions are in here to build 200 WAPIs how do you get this kit you email me you can email me at D.E. Kramer K-R-E-M-E-R -E -E at PacBell Dot net and I'll be happy to send you information about the WAPI kit and how you can order it. Now we're going to start making the WAPI. You'll notice you have 200, actually a little over 200 of these tubes in your kit. What we're going to do now is melt one end of the kit and then seal it down so it has no leaks. To do that we use an embossing tool. Okay now I'm heating the tube. As I mentioned this embossing tool puts air out at about 650 degrees. That's enough to get this plastic soft without catching it on fire. Normally what you'll see is that plastic starts to get some little bubbles in the end. That, start, that means to me that it's almost ready to squeeze down. And once it's ready to squeeze down, now I'm just going to take in my other hand the pliers, put them into the pliers, and squeeze it down while it's still soft. So now we have one end of the WAPI tube sealed. So now we have the WAPI tube, it's melted in one end. And what I've done now is put the washer on. Now I want to put wax in the tube. Put about a half inch or so of wax in the tube. There we go. And now we're ready actually to melt the other end. We're going to do that by turning our embossing tool on the same way we did before, except now we have a way, a little bit better way of holding it. We're going to turn this. Notice how I'm always turning it in front of the heat. And as I mentioned before, once you start to see a little bubbles going on, it's probably hot enough or that it's melted and soft enough that we can use the pliers on it. And when I crimp this other end, I'm going to try to make it in the same plane as the one that I have on it. It just gives a neater job. And it makes it easier to handle. So there we are. We have a WAPI tube now with the wax in it and the washer on it. Okay, now we're going to drill holes in the end of the tube that's sealed. This is so the wires will be able to thread through there later. You use a small drill, but instead of putting in wood, which often breaks a bit, I use just the box I sent the kit in. You start the drill up, let the drill do the work for you, and there you go. Then I turn it over, because we need one on each end. So now, this WAPI has been sealed on both ends, the washer's on it, and two holes have been drilled. Now we're going to put a wire in it so it uh, can hang in the pot. In your kit is a reel of stainless steel wire. We're going to use that in this step and also in your kit are what's called compression sleeves. And we'll use that in this step. Okay, now I told you you have your stainless steel wire 
you want to cut it in lengths of about 12 to 15 inches. This is a 15 inch ruler, so I just use that. You need sharp pliers to cut these, cut this, because it's very fine. So here I can make another one. You see, I just pull it out from the spool, hold it up, and cut the wire. Now, you don't want to do more than 200 of these because that's what you're making, 200 whoppies. Here, I'm cutting some more. So someone can actually cut these in batches. Okay, so first thing I do is I put the wire inside the compression ring, compression sleeve as it's called. Then I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to double back and make a loop. There we are, we have a loop. Now how are we going to keep that wire in there? We'll take a heavy pair of cutters. See, these are much heavier than the wire cutters I used before. I put them on the compression ring and I squeeze down to make a nice tight notch. When that's done, you'll see that the notch is there and the wire is in there and it won't come out. That's what we tried to accomplish. We have the WAPI that has holes drilled in both sides. We have a wire that has one end with the loop. Now our task is how are we going to wire this wire, take this wire through the wabi. First thing we do, hold it tight, put through the hole in one end, like that. What I normally do is I just hold it down like this and I slide the washer over it, push it down, it sort of makes that wire stand up. Then I can grab it, pull it, and I stick it through the other end of the WAPI, the other hole, and draw it all the way through. Now, the only thing that's left to do is to put a loop on this end, just like we did the first end. So to do that, we put the wire in another sleeve, like that, we turn the wire back, just like we did before, and make a loop, like that, and we take the cutters, and crimp again, just like we did the first time. It's a nice hard crimp. You're not going to cut through that all the way. Now it's crimped, and this loop is locked in place. So ladies and gentlemen, we now have our first WAPI that's ready to go. Of course, one of the things that comes with the WAPI is what we call the S-hook. That's the hook that the user can have to actually help it hang on the edge of the pot. You'll see that in the kit. The, the WAPI that's already made has one. So how do I make that? First thing is I just cut this heavier wire. It's not a threaded wire like the old stainless steel wire. I cut it maybe two or three inches. The safety thing to do here is always wear something to protect your eyes, but to be real safe, always hold on to the part that's cutting off. If you don't, it might fly across the room. Now that I have it off and cut, I can bend one side of the hook like this, and then I usually take pliers, and I can bend a smaller hook on this side. Simple. The S hook is done. Okay, now we've made our whoppies. And if you notice, the wax inside the whoppie still goes up and down just like it did when you, when you constructed it. The thing we want to do now is to melt the wax and make sure that it does not leak anywhere. Because if it leaks, then it's faulty and needs to be discarded. So to do that, one of the ways, and there's a lot of ways to do this, is to hook it on the S-hook that you made and hang it in the pot just like the user would do. Now, you could put 10 or 20 hooks, uh, whoppies on that hook and let them cure together or let them test together if you'd like. So I'll be having to leave it there for a while until the wax melts. Now, the wax at this point, since it's wax, is going to melt at about 170 to 175 degrees. The poppy has now been in the water long enough that the wax is melted, and if you'll notice, it's melted at the bottom. It's a clear liquid. That indicates that it's now ready to ship because it didn't leak. Had it leaked, we would discard this wabi because it wouldn't be any good. But now that it's ready to go, we'll package it. It'll go in the box going to the end user. Now with the kit, I will be emailing you these instructions that go inside the bag. And why do I email them to you? Because it's a Word document, and if you look at the lower part of the first page, it has my Watt Rotary Club information in it. You can take that 
information out and put your own organization's information. You're the one that's sponsoring this WAPI. So when someone is using this WAPI and they look down, they're going to see it's your club or your organization. I send this to you. You print it out on both sides and cut it down the middle, and this is what you get, an instruction. Now we're going to take that instruction and sit, put it in the sandwich bag that also comes with the kit. We put our S hook that we just made, and we put a completed WAPI that's been tested. It all goes into the bag, and of course then we're going to seal it. There you are. That's your completed WAPI. Very lightweight, takes up hardly any space, can be shipped anywhere in the world and start saving lives. So this is the WAPI kit that you would receive. Like I said before, all the components and instructions are in here to build 200 WAPIs. How do you get this kit? You email me. You can email me at dekramer, K-R-E-M-E-R, -E -E at packbell.net. And I'll be happy to send you information about the WAPI kit and how you can order it.